underlining the great reset the singapore mice forum is happening from 26th to 20th of july at the sands expo and convention center in singapore i'm your host raghav kosta and i'm pleased to be covering the singapore mice forum this event is happening after a gap of four years and it's bringing together the industry leaders in the region to talk about four key aspects which is technology sustainability innovation new business models and talent so let us talk to the delegates here the exhibitors the key dignitaries and understand from them what's shaping the world of business events in the new normal come with me i have with me the president of sashios the man himself mr richard island and i'd like to use this opportunity to have a small conversation with him uh, thank you mr richard for this opportunity and well, first of all congratulations for this great initiative and what a event it is what are the key highlights of smf this year the key highlights as with our theme is the great reset what do we want to do differently what do we want to learn from covid and what do we want to bring into our industry looking forward where that's new business models a new approach to sustainability a new approach to customers a new approach to talent these are the type of things we want to look at revisit and see can we do it better in our in our pre-pandemic environment oh, you're talking about these key issues that are concerning the business events community in a big way mm. uh, how do you feel that role of uh, technology will be going forward there's a lot of talk a lot of talk about immersive technology like chat mm. gpt being a major disruption in the community in the event community do you feel it's going to be a threat to us or it's going to act as an enabler to our event industry well as the minister said this morning um technology is one of the key drivers for our recovery yeah. and i think when i think about technology it's not about competing with the live environment it's about making the experience for the customers a better experience we talk about serendipity and that's always going to be a very very important part of our industry but also when i think about technologies how do you make those connections that we make easier and more meaningful I mean, even at an event like today with 400 people, we don't just bump into our old friends. We want to be able to do these connections and technology is a great way that can help us. I don't feel it's going to disrupt our industry. I think it's going to enhance the customer experience of our industry by making it easier to connect and making those connections that we do have more meaningful. Wonderful. And you're talking a lot about sustainability. Um, how do you feel it's going to become an actionable priority? We talk about, uh, the speaker here talked about maybe implementing some tax, maybe cutting 1% of your revenues to that. But, you know, the Singapore Tourism Board uh, spokesperson said, clearly, we don't want to add on to a tax system. So what are your comments on it? What can we, what steps can the event community do on their own to uh, build mm -hmm. more sustainable events? Well, I think before I answer that question, you have to look at what are the pressures at the moment. Some of our companies have pressures from, their, from shareholders with ESG. Some of all of our companies will have future pressures with customers. So we want to be able to devise a solution that we can do before we're hit by regulation. And I think, um, as, as our speaker from Marina Bay Sands said, is how do we use sustainability to drive top line growth? By making our events more sustainable, are they become points of differences between other events and other regions. So I think it's about working a new economic model into our business, not tax based, but around making it um, points of difference. And if our events are, we can create points of difference, our events will be better and, and that will be a, a competitive advantage rather than as a seen as a tax. Wonderful. And uh, lastly, you know, attracting new talent to our industry, young talent, because, you know, we need a change of thought processes. How do you feel an uh, event like this can help us or to, uh, you know, build new talent in the industry to attract more talent in the industry? It's competitive. A market is competitive. In a market like Singapore, there's a lot of options for young people. All we have to do is provide both a framework for young people coming into our industry whether it's through some of our initiatives like our internal uh, internship best practice or about creating mentorships. We have to make that transition from, from school, university into our industry a more seamless one. But I do think we have a lot to offer in our industry, Op opportunities to travel. It's a very diverse role. You know, you can work in content, you can do show calling, you can do operations, you can do sales, you can do marketing. There's so many, so the diversity piece is very important. Then also this point around purpose. A lot of people join our industry. It's very purpose-led industry. But I think we, what we have to do and what we have to do better is to get that message out. Uh, not to be afraid that it's a competitive environment, but to talk about the great things we have to offer and can offer and, and tell young people this is a really good industry. And this is back to your question about sustainability. Young people are interested in purpose and sustainability is very, very important. So if we don't embrace things like sustainability, um, 
we will lack competit competitiveness. So that's just one, one example. Wonderful. My final question, any message that you'd like to share with our audiences? What would be your final word of thought to them? Never waste a crisis, um, as, as some great business people have said. And, and the key is, what type of industry do we want to work for? Uh, as I said in my earlier speech, do we want to work for an industry that cares for its community, cares for its customers, cares for the environment, and cares for young people? I think the answer is absolutely yes. And this is part of our great reset having an industry that is truly inclusive um, and creates great opportunities but really cares for all the different stakeholders that we we collaborate with. Very fortunate to be standing with Dr. Edward Ko, the Executive Director of Singapore Tourism Board. Thank you Dr. Ko for giving us time and what a pleasure it is to attend this wonderful event. Uh, I must congratulate you because the way Singapore is bouncing back is really inspiration for all of us. You are setting a lot of milestones, a lot of examples for everybody in the mice industry to follow and of course in the travel industry as well. Uh, can you give us a small background about uh, Singapore Tourism Board? What activities you do to promote tourism in Singapore? So, uh, thanks, Raghav. Uh, firstly, very welcome to Singapore. Glad to have you here. Um, Singapore Tourism Board was established in 1964. Um, obviously, we have the mandate to deal with um, policies, business development, industry development, anything related to tourism. Um, we've got um, about a uh, hit count of about 500 people at Singapore Tourism Board. I deal with the conventions, meetings, and incentive travel part of tourism um, and uh, we are seeing a good recovery uh, post-pandemic. Uh, Singapore opened in April 2022, uh, I think we opened for about 14-15 uh, months by now. Uh, we've covered to about almost two-thirds of um, 219 pre-pandemic pre levels. Uh, MICE is especially strong. Uh, we are seeing very very good demand for MICE, for meetings, for incentive travel, uh, conventions, uh, exhibitions are all back. You can see the delegates, you can see Marina Bay Sands here. It's full of people, um, almost every hall is occupied. So we're in a good space. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, there's a lot of resilience of travel. The to this, this is becoming a global tourist hub, Singapore. Uh, what are the critical factors you feel that, uh, you know, uh, you feel they are important to promote Singapore as an important destination, not just for the mice travelers, but also for the leisure travelers? Well, I think it's really um, the connectivity. I think we are a hub for good reasons because it's very easy for people in the region to hop over um, our infrastructure. It's, it's very easy to get around in, in Singapore and really to the people from Europe and the US, we're really like a gateway to Asia. Um, it's always beginner's Asia for them. Um, if I give you a very simple example, right? Um, Taylor Swift decided uh, instead of traveling around Southeast Asia for her Asian tour, decided to hold all six concerts in Singapore, even though we've only got a population of 5.5 million people. It's really because people in this region are very used to and find it very convenient to convene in Singapore for all sorts of um, business and leisure purposes. So it makes commercial sense for them. And I think that makes commercial sense uh, from the leisure aspect as well. Uh, Dr. Edward, any message you would like to share with our audiences for the coming times? I would like to welcome our friends, uh, especially from India, to drop by Singapore. We are so well connected. Uh, actually, we see so many uh, Indian meetings and incentive groups back in Singapore already. And uh, we just want to say Singapore welcomes you. Uh, drop by soon. Yeah. And I am talking to Ms. Priscilla, who is a leading veteran, who is a renowned veteran in the industry here in this region. Can you tell us a little bit about the Singapore Mice Forum and what are the key highlights of this event? How is this event important for industry at this time? Okay. I think as uh, this particular event is actually called the Great Reset. You know? So we are actually uh, celebrating the fact that we have come out of COVID and then now we are embarking on a new journey. Uh, we're resetting everything and we're looking towards accelerating our growth as we go forward. Obviously, I think like the, what the Minister has spoken about this morning, we have two twin engines that we want to pursue in terms of digitalization, uh, how we improve the events that are being run and also on the sustainability angle and the efforts that we've taken, uh, the roadmaps that we have in Singapore to uh, push our industry towards sustainability in line with the goals of uh, the world Yeah, in terms of this aspect. And any message that you would like to share with the whole audiences at large? What is your message to them? Uh, I think the main message is that uh, I think we, we have all um, survived COVID and as now we should look forward to build a new 
world, you know, a new way of doing our events, be it uh, looking at the technology angle and also through sustainability, how to make our events even better as we go forward. I'd like to introduce you to one of the key dignitary here, uh, who is a renowned veteran in the industry. Thank you, sir, for giving us time. Can you please introduce us to yourself for our audiences? I'm Aloysius Salando. I'm the immediate past president for SASIOS, the MICE Association here in Singapore, and the organizer of the Singapore MICE Forum. Tell us a little bit more about SASIOS, what are its activities that you provide, and how is the exhibition and convention industry looking like in Singapore these days? So SASIOS is uh, Singapore's uh, national body for exhibition conference organizers and suppliers. So we are the association that works closely with the industry and the government agent agencies in order to advance the business and national objectives of the mice industry. And for the purpose of SMF, it is an important pa platform for us, especially coming out of COVID, to bring the, the industry players together to really discuss what could be the next big thing post-COVID. We've gone through the dark days of COVID. We've learned a lot. We know that technology and face-to-face -face meeting cannot be uh, uh, separated. It has to be blended. And what we also see is uh, the need to factor in sustainability considerations. So, and that's why for SMF, when we look at it as a great reset, we are resetting to a new baseline. And the baseline has to be digital with green initiatives as well as the blended approach towards tomorrow's impactful MICE events. I have this opportunity to have a word with him and understand more about himself and about the session he just moderated. Thank you for giving us time Ian and congratulations for this wonderful event. Most welcome. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself and the work you do in the Singapore uh, MICE industry. Sure. So uh, my name is Ian and I'm a co-owner of uh, Hone, a thematic meeting space uh, located at Clark Key. We specialize in workshops and trainings. Uh, that's our corner of the market. Um, so the Singapore Mice Forum is our big annual get together for industry. And um, we are so happy to have an excellent panel here. And we really hope to get the community back together because we've been apart for quite a while. Yes. So I think to summarize the session that we had earlier, um, essentially when anybody runs a business event, it goes through a life cycle. Whether the event succeeds, fails, when we talk about events, it covers social events, associations, it covers things like a B2B exhibition or conference or a B2C event. It goes through life cycles. You need to have people who are, are enthusiastic about the product because they are your biggest supporters. You need to have enough of them there to convince people who are visionary to come and join the event. And then once you have these two groups, right, and their voices are loud enough, your marketing push is strong, then you can bring in the folks who are the pragmatists. These are like the bulk. This is the, the huge ocean of people out there that they want a complete product. They want something which has been tested and tried, right? So they've heard about it enough times for them to say, okay, I want to go for this event. I want to be part of this association. So when we spoke earlier, we had panelists who obviously managed to bring these three groups in. And then they are at a stage right now where all the groups are in already. And they're trying to make sure they keep them together. So they're bolting on extra things. They're bolting on activities, conferences, uh, offsite events. And that's how they keep the ecosystem going. So I think being able to be a great community builder, managing all these different groups, because do the enthusiasts want to be in the same room with the pragmatists, the, the bulk of the, will they understand their, their, their lingo? It's hard, right? So great event organizers can manage all these groups. Thank you so much for giving us time. And uh, first of all, for our audiences, can you please introduce us to yourself? Yes, uh, my name is Sumet Sadasna. I'm the president of the Thailand Incentive and Convention Association and also first vice president of AFICA. And, uh, what, what do you have to say about the reset of the mice industry since the COVID? How do you see the resurgence of the business events community? Well, I think we've seen since uh, last quarter of last year, we've seen uh, a very um, fast surge of uh, resurgence of events like what we use we like to call uh, uh, what do you call a uh, revenge travel yeah. because I think uh, a for a big reason is because the budgets of corporations or organizations have been held up for three years and there's always been a need to to meet and to reward and to uh, you know to, to share so uh, when countries lift the uh, restrictions Events just start to pour in, yes. and uh, and uh, the trend is continuing. 
actually this year and next year. Uh, we, we see incentive uh, programs back as normal, like the pre-COVID days. And actually, even before pre-COVID, we saw um, some um, what you call a careful spending, more moderate spending and planning of, of programs. But after COVID, surprisingly, uh, the, um, the level of uh, spending has, has increased, actually. Okay. I think uh, it's to compensate for what we've been missing yes. for three years, yes. which is a good thing, yes. you know. And, uh, and the event and sizes uh, have become also uh, same as before, yes. not smaller. Any new trends that you see that have shaped up now after the COVID, if you want to talk about them, or is the same, uh, the focus is, remains the same like it was earlier? The, 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 the most important thing is to uh, achieve objectives of, um, of um, what increased performance of corporations and of organizations. That's always been the same. And the need to uh, get closer with more engagement with the, the target group. And uh, now there's uh, corporate social responsibility uh, agenda always in the program. You know, and uh, sustainability, sustainability uh, in a smaller way. Uh, because because um, basically the venues and the suppliers already are aware of the sustainability practices. Yeah. 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 And if you talk about the Thailand region, it's very proactive in promoting its tourism industry. Uh, what are some of the steps which Thailand has taken to promote more of uh, you know visitors coming in, flying into Thailand? Are there any things that they have initiated? Yeah, well, we, we emphasize on again uh, sustainability practice, and but then unfortunately, the most of the business uh, from long haul haven't really come back in the way that uh, that we would like to see. Now, most of business is from the region, from the regional markets. But that's that's still a good thing. That's still we see a lot of uh, a lot of movements coming in. How do you see the synergies with India? What is the relationship we both enjoy as a regional? I think India now is one of the top three arrivals of Thailand. You know, and uh, even even with the visa restriction, and uh, I think India uh, likes Thailand a lot. Yeah, the market and yes. uh, yeah, we see a lot of them in Phuket and in Pattaya and in Bangkok. Yeah, we, we welcome them and also wedding groups have also started to come back. Yes. Yeah. We are here at the Singapore Mice Forum. What are your comments on this uh, event? I think Singapore uh, set the standard in terms of um, uh, what, uh, bringing back business and uh, creating the um, atmosphere that uh, the country area is safe and it's good to come you know, and it's good value for money. And uh, we, we appreciate Singapore's initiative in the, letting the world know that the region is ready to welcome uh, events. I am very lucky to be standing with Christina, who is representing the Singapore Expo, one of the oldest and largest venues, mice venues in Singapore. So I'd like to understand from her the key highlights of her venue. Uh, so thank you, Christina, for giving us time today. And uh, you are one of the oldest venues in Singapore. Please yes. tell us a little bit more about Singapore Expo. What is the legacy of this venue? So Singapore Expo uh, is the largest in Singapore. Uh, it's actually a total of 10 halls and each hall is 10,000 square meter. So a total of 100,000 square meter uh, in the Singapore. So we are only one stop away from Changi Airport, very close and only 15 minutes from the downtown city. So we have hosted large scale events like Food and Hotel Asia, Singapore FinTech Festival and many other trade shows. We also recently clinched the ITMA 2025, which will also take out all 10 halls. Yeah, 100,000. So yeah. now the trade shows, exhibitions are back, uh, back with a bang. Mm. Uh, what is the average number of events that you host every year? So we host about 300 to 400 events every year at Singapore Expo. Corporate events, government events, trade shows and consumer events. Is this venue supported by the government or it's completely privately managed and completely privately owned? Yeah, so uh, we are actually owned by Constella Holdings. So it's a group where we actually uh, bid to actually manage Singapore Expo. And if you talk about some of the international events which take place at your venue, what would those international events be? So we hosted the largest food in Hotel Asia, which uh, took out 10 halls in 2018 before the pre-pandemic. So we are ground level uh, Singapore Expo. So our service trenches can actually support all these utilities, heavy power, water, compressed air. So we are the venue that large sale exhibitions come to. Wonderful. Yeah. Even the live machinery shows, yes, industrial correct. shows. Yes, so even compressed air, large sale machines, uh, we are just on ground level. So loading is our um, one of our top sellers and we are actually the
the only pillarless, columnless uh, exhibition hall in Singapore. Wonderful. Yeah. And you are promoting uh, sustainable events. Can you tell yes. us a little bit more about that? Yeah, so uh, our company actually has a very, very bold and wild vision. We are going to be net zero by 2024, which is next year. So we actually install solar panels all above our roofs. So to actually power the renewable energy. Um, and also we will have a hydroponic pump. Uh, above where we grow our own vegetables and we also rear our own fishes so to reduce the carbon footprints wherever we have events like that when we supply the food yeah. wonderful and finally we are here at the smf uh, what do you feel about this initiative smf is a wonderful event you know it gives us the opportunity to actually talk to everyone in this ecosystem whether it's venue publication uh, contractors uh, because you know we are all integrated no one you know is a singular major component of it so you know this platform gives us uh, to understand what is it in the future for the mines industry and then we can contribute yeah so it's a wonderful event and Thank I'm you. very proud to be here uh, my name is Michelle Lee I'm the managing director of the O4 company uh, we're a company that runs not mice but leisure events um, so right now we focus on two uh, leisure event IPs, uh, Gastro Beats and SneakerCon. Uh, one is a food, music and lifestyle festival and the other, SneakerCon, is um, uh, a sneaker uh, marketplace um, which uh, originated in the US but we brought it into Singapore for the first time uh, this year. The, I'd like to understand from you the relevance of digitalization, how technology is helping the e event community uh, in a way to build communities around it and you know engage with its audiences throughout the year. To set some context, I was uh, on a panel earlier that talked about the rising importance of community. Um, I think um, digitalization is part and parcel of anything that you do. Um, you know, whether it's in terms of social media, whether it's in terms of CRM, whether it's in terms of data collection and so on. Um, be part of uh, number one finding your community engaging them uh, and also keeping them well i mean it's uh it's a key anchor of of the mice industry this annual event um it's been going on for a good number of years uh, i had the pleasure of being involved in it when i was previously with um working within the the, the, the mice sector itself um and i think it's an important event that um you know brings together people from the industry every year Please tell us a little bit about yourself and your organization. Well, I have been in this mice industry since 1977. In other words, about 46 years ago. Well, started organizing trade shows in Singapore, then I moved on to Malaysia, Thailand, China, then India and the rest of the world. So uh, over these years, uh, I have already developed or been involved in organizing more than a thousand events, more than a thousand events. Uh, and I'm delighted that I've made some contribution, perhaps uh, more in China, uh, where I helped to create events like SEFCO, uh, helped to conduct training in China. Uh, so hence, uh, China has been a big market but equally important now, uh, uh, India is uh, making its presence felt. Uh, I had also done shows in, Ch in uh, India, in Madras and in Chennai. Uh, so uh, I'm also delighted to see that the new facilities are now being built. I heard that the Prakadi Maidan has been rebuilt, was opened yesterday. And therefore, uh, I look forward to having more events in India. We talk about the Singapore Mice Forum. What are your statements or uh, you know what like to highlight about this uh, important in initiative? Well, uh, if I may say so, I created this event Singapore Mice Federation when I was the president about 15 years ago. Uh, the whole objective of this forum is to bring together the expertise in the industry so that they could share with us you know some of the thinking some of the innovation in the industry so that the the younger people you know could learn from from them and to carry the industry forward so i'm delighted to see that the uh, smf today 
uh, has got has already reached a very high level with more than 400 delegates and from the panel discussion you heard earlier uh, there are very uh, groundbreaking uh, ideas how we should really look at uh, developing more on digitalization and green initiative you know, to meet the demands of the day uh, to help sustain the industry going forward. Uh, I'm sure there will be a lot more that we can learn from the other speakers uh, and uh, therefore, uh, uh, well, we really welcome uh, more participation from our regional partners, as I said, from India, uh, I'm delighted to see a lot of uh, foreign delegates uh, from Southeast Asia in particular. Uh, so we hope that through the Singapore MICE uh, Forum, we could, of course, uh, contribute towards the overall development of the MICE industry in this part of the world. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for giving us time. Uh, please introduce us to yourself. Thanks, Raghav. Thank you for the opportunity to share about MICE Carbon. Well, regardless of how sustainable an event is, there will always be a footprint. MICE Carbon was created to decarbonize the MICE industry in a very easy and transparent way from the individual delegate to the organizer and even sponsors. So what we do is, uh, you know, in traditional carbon markets, sometimes the carbon size is way too large and it's also inaccessible. What we have done is using blockchain technology to put these carbon credits onto a platform that can be easily accessed and bought for offsets by individuals and organizations. And we have certificates that are also verified to be genuine carbon offsets. So um, this is the whole premise of MICE Carbon and we are an aggregator industry. So don't forget, as an organizer, we own very little of the assets. We work with hotels, we work with uh, FMB providers, transport providers, transportation, building and construction for the staging, audiovisual, so everything, right, is a third party partner. Why not work with a specialist carbon offset partner, which is MICE Carbon? Amazing. This is a great concept, lovely initiative, much needed also. But tell me one thing, what's the ground reality when you speak to the organizers, venues, uh, what do they say about your initiative and whether they are ready to invest in this kind of initiative? I'm delighted to share that all of the people we have spoken to from venues to event organizers have embraced this concept of decarbonizing and right now are in the phases of finding out from us how best to work with them. So conceptually, Everyone in the mice industry is of the mindset, at least at this forum, at the Singapore Mice Forum, that decarbonization is important, sustainability is important, but also maintaining the quality of an event is important. So there's always a trade-off there. And uh, to, I would say, experienced organizers and minds in the business, it's perhaps better to work with specialist third parties so that we can focus on our jobs of organizing great events standing with the international ambassador of the Indian exhibition industry, Mr. Ravinder Sethi, and I'm going to understand from him what are his key takeaways from this great event. The main topic which is being raised here at the forum is, there are two topics in fact. One, fire the digital engine. Everybody is talking about how digital is going to impact our industry. And of course, the second main issue that is being raised is about sustainability. I would like to understand from you what are your key takeaways on these topics, especially for the Indian market? <laughs> Thank you, Raghav, and so nice to have you and your team over here also. I, I First of all, I must compliment Satchios for uh, their theme which they've taken. The Great Reset, and instead of taking 10, 20, 100 different subjects, two main things which are going to be affecting us in the coming years, you know, fire the digital bullet and be green, sustainability. It's very interesting, like I've been hearing yesterday all day, you've been hearing all the different sessions which are going on. You know, I think when you're talking about the first aspect, digitalization, in many ways, India is actually ahead of what is happening in Singapore. India's industry, our exhibition industry, are no less to what we are seeing over here. Okay, you can leave aside the gadgets and some of these, uh, you know, other frills. We are way up uh, in front in terms of this aspect. Sustainability, I think we are doing a lot. 
IEIA has set up a very aggressive uh, committee to, uh, to look after sustainability, to spread the word. Our venues have taken a big lead right now. If you talk about uh, IEML or uh, BIEC, Hyderabad, and upcoming Dwarka, Geo, you know, they're all focusing on sustainability, the venues. Many, many organizers have it on top of their agendas. The service providers, freight forwarders, for us, for example, we are going electric in many ways. So, sustainability is very, very relevant for the reset in the Indian market. But I still feel personally, and I can't pinpoint why, I feel we need to do more. And more perhaps not just in terms of implementation, but the awareness stage. So, reset. I think India is very much on top as far as these two subjects go. Mentioned a great deal about the Indian scenario. I'd like to understand from you what is the international mood about the Indian market today? What do you see? Do you, do you see there's evolution in that? Absolutely. I mean, we, we heard Robin Hu, the chairman of Constellar, this morning. He made no bones about it. You know, India today, from an agrarian uh, economy, they have shifted to being the the, the, the topmost uh, IT service sector economy in the world. We're going to be in the top three economies very soon in the world. So, India is very much, very much, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the top of the subject uh, inside over here. What is a challenge right now is for the manufacturing sector to come up to expectations. It's going to take time because the infrastructure development has to take place. It's taking place. You know, Robin gave some very good statistics from Morgan Stanley's uh, report. So it's getting there. It's India. Now, there has to be a shift in what we talk about India. It's no more about why should we go to India? The three Ds, you know, demographics, democracy, diversity, demand. It's no more that. It's how to do business in India. And if you're not in there by now, believe me, you either miss the boat or you will miss the boat. It's good days for India and, and great compliments to IEIA for the this, this sort of awareness campaign which, which has been done across the board. I'm just one, one little soldier in there, you know. The whole team has been very, very aggressive. And uh, uh, what is the buzz around the new development, new venues that are coming up, the redevelopment, Prakriti Maidan, and of course the, the new the, uh, venue coming up in Dwarka. Do you see a lot of buzz, some, some, some queries coming to you in that regard? But, no, but I say that in a very positive manner. The awareness is now here. The infrastructure is here in India. You cannot, you know, five years ago I used to come here and say the infrastructure will come, it will happen, Dwarka will come, Geo will come, Pragati Bandhan will be reconstructed, etc., etc. No, no, no. It's That buzz doesn't exist anymore. The buzz now is shifting to how to do business in India. No more about how to get there. Okay, and what's the secret recipe to do business in India? Patience, patience, patience. I've said that several times in the past. That still remains. We are a democracy. And one of the perils of democracy is also, you've got to go through the channels, uh, uh, the bureaucracy, but don't, don't, we, we, we cannot let that be an obstacle. No, it's, it's just a different way of doing business. So that's my three words again. Is IIA also open to help out uh, organizers who want to delve into the Indian market? They can give some guidance how to do business in India and uh, they, can, they can handhold the international players. IIA is there as an institution to provide information, know-how, knowledge about the Indian market. And I think it's an amazing job which IIA, the Secretariat, individual executive committee members, individual members of IIA, forget just the top uh, hierarchy in there, they're doing an amazing job. But specifically on case-to-case -case basis, that's not the association's role. But the awareness about India, the market, it's going on, it's ongoing. What would be your message to the Indian exhibition industry and the global exhibition industry at large? The Indian exhibition industry, welcome the world. Believe me, there's going to be a great, great inflow, which is going to be very positive for the Indian exhibition industry. And the Indian exhibition industry should not fear them because they are very, very strong. And 
they should see this as a a very positive move rather than a uh, a move of fear welcome the world can you please introduce us to yourself uh, I'm Vimal, Vimal Gangarin. I'm the CEO of uh, Give Me, when event technology company, really specializing in uh, in the mice industry. And I'm also uh, part of the SACIUS uh, uh, Executive Committee. I serve as the Honorary Secretary. It was the Singapore Mice Award held uh, last night. And I know that your organization won a prestigious award. Can you share something about it? What was the category and uh, what was the premise of that award? Yeah, so that was really lovely because, you know, the, the, the biggest uh, recognition you get is that from the industry. So yesterday was the inaugural Singapore Mice Awards. So we won uh, the award for the best digital innovation of the year. Yeah, amazing. And uh, finally, any observation about this edition of SMF? This is the 10th edition happening after four years. So what is your overall expression about this event? Look, first of all, it's been great. And, and, and I think it, it's been a reflection of what events are really all about. It's really about connection, about meeting people. Uh, the content has been great, but I think we all go for events really to make new friends, new connections, new partners, and uh, uncovering business opportunities as well. And I think uh, Singapore Mice Forum has been a great reflection of that. Uh, there have been a great showcase around sustainability specifically uh, and then uh, there have been a great showcase of different solutions, people doing different aspects around sustainability, be it on the technical side of things, tech side of things, and then uh, deploying robots to get things uh, automated all the way to the type of food and drinks that are more sustainable. Yeah. Mr. Matthias from D.B. Shankar. D.B. Shankar, as you know, is a global player in exhibition logistics and they just completed their 150 years journey. So very happy to be with Matthias. I'm going to understand his profile and uh, let him speak. Uh, hello Matthias, thank you for giving us time. Uh, for our audiences, can you introduce us to yourself, your background and uh, your professional journey? Uh, when did you start in this industry and what are you handling now in the industry, in what capacity? Yeah, hi. First of all, thanks for having me. Um, my name is Matthias. I'm with Stevie Schenker since 2011. Started in this industry in 2009. Worked in different uh, countries and uh, continents. Um, back in uh, back in Europe since 2014. Working for the head office and taking care of the product uh, fairs and exhibition, the business development strategy, and uh, in a dual role for Asia as well currently. Amazing. This is a long legacy. And Matthias, uh, can you tell me? What is the outlook in general about the exhibition industry since the you know uh, since we have had COVID, which has erupted, which has you know badly impacted the industry? But now, how do you see the outlook in the exhibition industry in the current times? I'm quite confident. I mean, COVID uh, obviously had and had a bad impact uh, on the industry and especially for us as well in the exhibition logistics. It was uh, tough times, but our company was very supportive. Uh, it was clear that we uh, continue with this uh, product and with this business unit and um, we see since uh, since COVID has ended a very strong uh, development and uh, I think we are back on track. Sustainability becomes more and more important in our industry um, not only in logistics uh, of course generally but especially as well in exhibition logistics we have more and more customers who are demanding uh, sustainable solutions and um, I think DB Schenker is um, I can say at the forefront of this developments. Wonderful. My final question, we are here at the Singapore Mice Forum and this initiative uh, is happening, you know, after a gap of four years. What is your uh, expression towards this initiative? Do you feel it's an important initiative for the industry? Very important and I'm very happy to be here. It was more or less a coincidence because we're here for an internal uh, regional conference uh, with our colleagues. Um, it was a very good uh, meeting, a very good atmosphere and the Singapore Mice Forum as well is a very good initiative. Um, it's so good to see each other again in person. Our business is a people business and um, you know, meeting all these people and seeing the, the passion and the dedication for our industry is just uh, a really good thing. I'm very happy to be here. I found a renowned man from the event industry, Mr. Jasper Donat. And uh, we're going to understand from his background, his legacy, because he's a renowned leader in the event space. So thank you, Jasper, for giving us time. For our audiences, if you can introduce us to yourself, what is your background and what all events you organize. I, I know that you have a rich uh, legacy in India as well. So if you can talk about that. Um, you just called me an old man, which is probably the first time in my life, but I'll, 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 I'll accept that. Um, so yeah, Jasper Donat, I run a company called Branded, we're 23 years old. Before that I was with Channel V, 
uh, where we did a lot of stuff in India. Uh, the, the awards in, in De Delhi with the Spice Girls and John Bon Jovi. We had Shaggy on the beach in Goa. Uh, so, yeah, I have a very long, strong love affair with, with India. We also used to do the YouTube Fan Fest, uh, which took place in the Geo Garden. Um, so, yeah, I've done many, many, many events, events there. Most recently, we did uh, a wonderful festival that we produce around the region called It's a Girl Thing. It's a Girl Thing is a festival targeted at teenage girls. Uh, designed to empower, to inspire, get them off their phones, get them out, um, and and really kind of talk about a lot of things that wouldn't normally be talked about on stage. It's kind of like TED for teens, um, but we just did that in Bombay in February, um, and we won a Wow Award as the gold gold award for the festival of the year. So we're very very proud of that. We partnered with uh, our friends at Z Live, uh, awesome awesome team. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to, to maybe doing more of that in India. We, we, we did a lot of them virtually uh, for two or three years as well um, and, and gained hundreds of millions of viewers. But, but seeing 4,000 fans uh, in a live venue in Bombay is better than anything. So yeah, no, we're very, very proud of what we've, what we've achieved in India. Okay, just and what is your take on the upcoming trends in the event space? Do you feel technology like immersive uh, digital AI like chat GPT can be a threat to our industry? I think I think look, AI is both exciting and challenging. It is a, it, there are all sorts of threats um, over employment over but, but I think that there are if you look at the more positive side of it, it can make events more accessible ultimately. If I can have translation software where, you know, I don't speak Hindi, so why should an event be in, in, in English? But if I'm in an event where, where people are on stage speaking Punjabi, speaking Hindi, I want to be able to understand it. So, so I think making events more accessible through, through technology is very exciting. I think content delivery, content writing uh, is, is helpful. Um, but again, you know, I don't want to see it taking a single person's job uh, and, and, and rolling it into a computer. So, you know, it's, it's, it is, it, it's scary as well as exciting. Absolutely. Events also produce a lot of waste. What is your take on sustainability as an event organizer? Do you also uh, do some initiatives to uh, reduce the impact uh, on the environment? Yes. Yeah, so uh, we have an event called All That Matters in Singapore in September every year. And last year we uh, we ran a program where we planted trees in Australia, run by a friend of ours, uh, a, pro a project run by a friend of ours called Robert Swan, um, where we plant trees to balance and offset the carbon footprint that our event makes. Uh, we've also in India working with companies like OML. Uh, we've always um, where we collect all the refuse. Uh, recycle, reuse, and what have you, so we don't just throw it all away. Um, but yeah, we, we, we take it very, very seriously. Perfect. And uh, you are here at the Singapore Mice Forum. Any observation about the event? What's the initiative like? Uh, look, I think, I think it, it has to be the ultimate challenge to produce an event about events for the event industry, where literally everyone's going to turn up with a white glove and, and, and um, comment on every single facet of it. The production's been great. I love the way they've set up the room. I love the way that it's all in, inclusive in one place. You've got the food, you've got the exhibition stands, and you've got the, the, the sessions themselves. I think the program is excellent. Um, of course it's excellent, I spoke on it. Um, but I, I think that, yeah, they've done a really good job to, to create an event that is different, that's engaging uh, and interesting to, to be at. With the man, Mr. Dylan Sharma, who is the chairperson of the Singapore Mice Forum. Thank you for giving us time, Dylan. Uh, first of all, congratulations for this great initiative. Thank you. Uh, what have been the key highlights of this event? I think the key highlight of this event has really been bringing people together. Um, like you said earlier, this is after a COVID enforced hiatus. And what was wonderful was reconnecting with old friends as well as making new friends. For some of the international participants, we've not seen each other since COVID. So that reconnection, um, the coming together of friendships was really the most meaningful and to me personally, the key highlight of the Singapore Mice Forum. 
Okay. Uh, you've talked about four key aspects, technology, innovation, sustainability, and of course, uh, new business models. Uh, what are your statements around these? What have been the developments? What have been the revelations coming from the speakers about these topics? I think let me start with sustainability first. Sustainability really is at the heart and at the center of everything that we're doing as an industry and as an association. Um, we've learned a lot in the last few days about sustainability, not just for the mice industry, but about sustainable living. And I think the key line that we also learned is this is a journey, an ongoing journey, and we have got a lot more to learn, but we need everybody to come on that journey together. We try to make it as less, as least onerous as possible, but it's important that everybody comes on that journey with us to learn about sustainability and to implement it even in small ways as best as we can in our daily lives and in our organizations. With regards to innovation, I think the key thing that we've learned is the value of partnership and collaboration. Um, without which, like one of the speakers said, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And I think that really speaks to the heart of partnership and collaboration. And with the mindset of innovation and disruption, doing new things together. Absolutely. And uh, wonderful. What are your upcoming plans from here on? What, what we are going to see? Uh, what is the vision ahead for SMF next year? Well, SMF has now got a, got a new bar. We've raised the standards for the Singapore Mines Forum and our challenge is to adhere to it. But the important thing is to hear the feedback from our audience. So from all our stakeholders, the reason we do it is to educate, create awareness and build meaningful connections. So post this event, we will certainly take on board all the feedback from our stakeholders and our members and see how we can do better. But we're confident building on this year's theme that we will take it the next step forward. We will develop more content and develop more opportunities, not just for the MICE Forum, but also for the Singapore MICE Awards, uh, which recognizes the best of the industry by the industry. And it's also recognizing not just local Singapore players, but also regional players who organize trade shows in the region.